Welcome to Josh's Football Breakdowns. What is up, everyone? Well, the 49ers just coming off a big win against the Rams have looked like a very solid football team, and they were really excited to play the Bills on Monday Night Football, one of the best teams in the AFC. And I think everybody was anticipating that this was going to be a really good game, and the Bills kind of served them up with a dose of reality. Now, what happened? Were the Bills that good? Were the 49ers that bad? Well, let's take a look and see if we can figure it out. Now, right before the game, we found out that Emmanuel Mosley was not going to be able to play. He was a game-time decision, and turned out he just couldn't go. So the 49ers were forced to make some adjustments on defense. Mosley would have been defending Bills slot receiver Cole Beasley. So here, he's defended by Tarverius Moore instead, who is himself playing for an injured Joukowsky Tart. Moore is supposed to be defending him, but for some reason lets him run right by. After the play, you see Jimmy Ward explaining the signal to him, and you also see Richard Sherman and Dre Greenlaw talking to him as well. Let's go back to the snap. We immediately notice that Moore is unsure of what to do, and we see both Jimmy Ward and Dre Greenlaw telling him what to do. The 49ers have been developing Moore for a few years now, but in these last few games, he's looked pretty lost at times. One other thing to notice on this play, we see Kerry Hyder stunting to the inside, but Josh Allen very comfortably and naturally just moves to his left. Bills have a nice opening drive and get the ball all the way down to the one yard line, but here they're facing a fourth down. A lot of coaches might take the points on the road here and kick the field goal, but the Bills are having a tremendous season and they're really going for it. The play is very simple. The tight end and the fullback will block for the running back. Oh, but this is a fake. It's not actually a running play. And we see number 71, tackle, Ryan Bates, is going out for a pass. Now, ordinarily, he wouldn't be eligible to receive a pass unless he reports to the official that he's going to be eligible on the play which he did. It's a play that can trick another team because they're not expecting a tackle to try to catch that pass. But the 49ers are all over it. So the Bills have a backup plan. They send the other tight end, Lee Smith, into the pattern as well. And Allen looks his way, but Dre Greenlaw is right there waiting for him. So Allen throws the ball away from the defender, and it's just too tough catch, and the pass is incomplete. Now one thing I notice is that despite turning the ball over on downs, the Bills after this play, while they're disappointed, just seem very calm, and that's a team that has a lot of poise. So now the 49ers get the ball, but they're backed up, and they're facing a third down and seven. At the top of the screen, notice Brandon Ayuk blows by Wallace. Wallace is forced to grab him by the arm to prevent him from beating him on the play. Or did he? We didn't really get a clear look there, did we? Let's go back to the snap. Here we see a great shot of Wallace holding down Ayuk's arm, preventing him from getting both hands up to make the catch. That's against the rules, it's pass interference, and it was a good call by the officials. The 49ers would get an automatic first down at the spot of the foul. On this next play, notice Mike McGlinchey does not block the defensive end in front of him. Instead, he fires off to the second level. The 49ers bring Ross Dwelly around to block the end so that Raheem Mostert can run in behind them. But watch Dwelly on this play because he makes a spectacular block. Boom! That is epic. What a block. And Raheem Mostert is off to the races. From this angle, we get an excellent look at one of the things that makes Raheem Mostert such a special back, because not only does he have the speed, but he also has the vision. The most natural move would be to follow his blocker to the outside here, but that might allow the linebacker Klein to step over and make the play. So Raheem Mostert actually takes a few steps to the inside first, 
and forces Klein to commit, and only then does he make the move to the outside. That is a great run, well executed by the 49ers. Here we see Debo Samuel comes in motion, and it looks as if the running back might be blocking for him on a play downfield. So Wallace decides to step to the inside and cut Debo off at the pass. There's just one problem. The 49ers don't give the ball to Debo. But here Wallace makes, in my opinion, a good decision and recognizes that he's got a free shot at the quarterback, so he keeps going. Now Jordan Reed is going to be coming open over the middle, that defender is more interested in dropping down to pick up the running back. But it still leaves Mullins vulnerable to a big hit, and it looks like that hit is going to get there before he has time to make the throw. So there's really only one thing Mullins can do, and that is he has to start his throwing motion before Jordan Reed has made his break. Big hit, but Mullins and Reed make the play, and it's a first down for the 49ers. Stands in, takes the shot, accurate throw, very impressive. Now, as you can see, the 49ers are facing a fourth and goal at the one of their own. And here, the Bills make a huge defensive play and stuff Wilson before he can get into the end zone. Wow. Let's go back to the snap. The 49ers start out by putting rookie tight end Charlie Warner in motion and Klein goes with him. Now here, Warner's in excellent position to block the defensive end, but the expectation for the 49ers was that Klein would continue to go with him, leaving a hole in the middle for Jeff Wilson Jr. But Klein recognizes the play and immediately shoots that gap. Wilson could try to bounce to the outside, but Tremaine Edmonds is in position to make the play. So Wilson decides his best shot is just to try to power forward and power it through, but Edmonds is up to the challenge. This is fantastic linebacker play on the part of the Buffalo Bills, and it saved a touchdown. So now the Bills are backed up on their own one yard line, and I can't remember which coach it was, but there was somebody that used to say, don't get nervous, somebody's about to score. It's a funny joke, but of course what he means is these situations can be a bit unpredictable, and here, the Bills fumble the football and it's recovered by the 49ers' Fred Warner. Wow. Number 20 is a promising rookie for the Bills, Zach Moss. But here, he makes a rookie mistake. And he sticks his arms out for the football, which you don't want to do because that's exactly what can happen. Instead, you let your quarterback put the ball into your chest. And only then do you try to secure it. So the 49ers get the ball and they try a couple of quick running plays with Raheem Mostert that are stopped. And watch how quickly the camera pans from the scoreboard back down to the field. That means the 49ers were going no huddle, so the camera didn't really have time to get the information and then go back to the field. So it's very likely that they're doing the same play. And you can see Mullins holding the ball out for Raheem Mostert. So the Bills send an all-out run blitz. Also notice, this defender is taking away the outside from Brandon Ayuk. Well, Ayuk cuts to the inside where he comes wide open for a touchdown pass from Nick Mullins. Now Ayuk wildly misses the trick shot attempt, but don't worry, Brandon, you're in good company. And besides, it could be worse. Now, when I was watching this game, I turned to my wife and I said, man, this could really be bad for the Bills because if you think about it, they went all the way down the field but got stuffed at the goal line and then the Niners go on what is essentially a 99-yard drive. Now, Buffalo was able to stop them too, but then San Francisco gets the ball right back and scores. That's a very bad turn of events for the Bills. But boy, was I wrong. Josh Allen responds with an incredible throw. So Buffalo comes out swinging. They send two wide receivers and a tight end deep, and they also have a check down underneath. Now Richard Sherman has taken the check down away, and Jimmy Ward is covering the tight end. 
The flanker up top is also covered by Jason Verrett. So that leaves Tarverius Moore covering Cole Beasley. Beasley is going deep and he's threatening to blow right past Moore. Moore has to respect that. So he turns his hips and as soon as he does, Beasley cuts in front of him. So far so good, right? Except that the pass rush of Kevin Givens is threatening to get home to Josh Allen. So Allen has to scramble. Now he still has Beasley if he wants him. But he's got to throw this ball way down the field and now he's got to do it while he's on the run. That's a difficult throw. And of course we know he can't throw it to where he is. He has to throw it to where he's going to be. And it's no problem. Wow, that is so impressive. Now take a look from this angle and tell me who you see. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that Aaron Rodgers out there? Look at Moore. He can't believe it. Okay, we're in the second quarter now and the teams have switched sides. But it's still the same drive for the Bills. All right. Now we see Jimmy Ward is covering the tight end, and Dante Johnson is covering Davis. So let's just get those guys off the field to make this a little easier. We can see that that leaves Richard Sherman covering Cole Beasley. Now, if Sherman decides to take the inside away from Beasley, Beasley will just simply run to the corner. So Sherman actually backpedals here. Well, Beasley says, no problem. In that case, I will take the inside. And that's what he did. Now this is still a very tight window here, so Allen has to throw an absolute bullet, and it's got to be right on the money. Take a look. Man, what a pass, and great reaction by Sherman. He almost made the play, but there was just, just, just that window, and it's a touchdown for the Bills. God, that play almost reminds you of the Alex Smith to Vernon Davis play against the Saints. Not the one in the playoffs, the one from the year before. Cole Beasley is having himself a day, but the 49ers say, you know what, we got a receiver we like too, and his name is Brandon Ayuk. When we look at the stem of Ayuk's route, it looks like he's going deep. The defensive back has to respect that, so he reacts accordingly, and when he does, Ayuk cuts to the inside. A little bit better of a throw, and Ayuk is still running. Later on in the drive, San Francisco is facing a third down and five. So the Bills know this is an important play, and it looks like they might be sending their slot corner to blitz. This is something the Saints did very effectively against San Francisco a couple weeks ago. But when we take a look, we realize that there's still only four pass rushers, so it's not technically a blitz. And what they've done instead is both of their linebackers who were up at the line of scrimmage have dropped back in the pass coverage. That's okay. Kendrick Bourne makes sure that he gets enough depth on his route that he gets past them before he cuts to the inside where he should be wide open to catch a pass. Now, if you're wondering what about that safety that's right there, well, Jordan Reed is running a post. He's going to take the safety away. Well, that's what he's supposed to do anyway. He actually ends up running a very sloppy route. He looks back at the quarterback once he thinks he's open, and he actually interferes with Bourne's route. The pass is incomplete, and Bourne is hopping mad. You've got to know your routes and run them very precisely. I just can't imagine what he was thinking here. Okay. Incomplete pass. Bills get the ball back now. Now at the top of your screen, you're going to see Richard Sherman is covering Stephon Diggs one-on-one -on -one with no safety help. The Bills are all over this, and Diggs goes deep. And to make matters worse, he actually catches Sherman just a little bit flat-footed here. Sherman doesn't have the speed to keep up with him anyway, so he reaches out and grabs him. And he actually twists and turns him around. This is obviously against the rules. Now, that momentum turned 
Diggs to the inside, and it carried Richard Sherman's momentum further upfield. Now, Josh Allen sees this, but he doesn't know what he's seeing. Diggs isn't where he expected him to be, and neither is Richard Sherman. So Allen looks and looks and looks, and it makes sense, right? Every quarterback in the league knows you don't take chances against Richard Sherman. You don't even throw at Richard Sherman if you can help it. And you're just, you're never sure when you're looking at Richard Sherman. So he doesn't want to throw a conventional pass here and potentially have Richard Sherman able to make a play on this ball. So he decides to try to gun it in there. What, of course, when he does that, the ball is going to travel at a very low trajectory, one that Fred Warner is able to jump up and make a play on. Warner tips it up and makes the interception, and it's a great play for the 49ers, but let's go backwards here. And this time we're going to look up top and we're going to see the flag come in as a penalty on Richard Sherman, and this is absolutely 100% the correct call. If Sherman had not done that, this interception would not have happened. Here we get a great look at him, looking, 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 trying to figure out what he's seeing before he throws that pass. Great! Great play by Fred Warner. Unfortunately for the 49ers, it didn't count. It gives the Bills an automatic first down. Now they were able to drive all the way down to the four yard line. Here they bring the tight end around to secure the backside of the play while the rest of the offensive line goes the other way to block for the running back. And the 49ers defense reacts accordingly. And that's unfortunate because this isn't a running play. It's a pass to the tight end. In fact, it's a screen pass. The wide receivers are going to block for him. And this is what they call an oh shoot screen because when the defense realizes what's happening, they all yell, oh shoot. And if you need any further evidence of that, just watch Dre Greenlaw on this play. Some of you might remember from last year, the second game we played against the Cardinals, the 49ers actually ran this play, and we covered it on the channel. The Niners scored a touchdown with it, and here, the result is the same. So now the Bills are up 14-7. to Now remember the breakdown we did last week against the Rams. Aaron Donald had gotten through, and Nick Mullins had to put a move on him and then scramble for his life. And Kendrick Bourne saw him, and was able to run back and turn towards his quarterback, and Nick Mullins was able to find him downfield. Well here, the exact same thing happens. And here we've reached what, in my opinion, is a little bit of a turning point in the game. There's a minute 12 left before the half. So San Francisco decides to punt. Even though they're really too close to punt, too far away for their field goal. I would have liked to have seen them go for it here. The reason they punted was because they didn't want the Bills to use that minute to go down and get a field goal of their own. With the good field position they would have gotten if San Francisco didn't pick up the fourth down. But in my opinion, I don't think that made any difference. And it didn't in the game. The Niners defense wasn't able to stop the Bills all game long. Did they really think they were going to get a stop here? Now if you're thinking 4th and 6 is still too risky to go for it, I agree with you. That's why I think the third down play should have been different. Let's take a look at the X's and O's. So this is the third down play. The ball's at the 46 yard line. And they've got to get up to the 40 to get a first down. Like there. So. The Niners bring in three wide receivers and Jordan Reed to run pass patterns, and the running back will run a pass pattern too. Now the Bills, again, look like they're going to send a linebacker blitz, but once again we see that they're only rushing four. They're going to drop their defensive end back into pass coverage. The pass is incomplete, and now the 49ers are faced with a difficult fourth down and six. But let's go back and take a look at what they could have done. Imagine if they had pulled some of those wide receivers out and brought the fullbacks and the tight ends back in and just did like a power running play. Maybe they only gained three yards on it. But now it's fourth down and three. They only need three more yards instead of fourth down and six. In my opinion, that would have put them in a better position 
to go for it on fourth down, it would have taken some time off the clock to leave less time for Buffalo. And, of course, if they don't get it, it makes no difference, right? Yeah, the Bills might go down and kick a field goal, but again, that's actually what happened in the game. Let's take a look at how the Bills were able to do that. Now, as you can see, there's only 11 seconds left at this point in their drive, and they're still on the 37. They need a few more yards for their field goal. Now watch as they send a man in motion and a 49er player follows them. That's very important for this particular play. They have to know that the Niners are in man coverage because this is their plan. Buffalo has a special play ready for just this situation. They're going to send Davis all the way across the field knowing that Richard Sherman has to chase him. They know Richard Sherman's too slow to keep up with him. Now he just wants to get to the 29, but it's so successful he's able to turn upfield and get an extra few yards and run out of bounds with just four seconds left on the clock. Great play by the coaching staff to come up with that one. And they kick a field goal, giving him a 10-point lead at the half. All right, let's move ahead to the third quarter. The Niners start off with a run, but, well, if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you should probably know never to trust me when I just say it's a running play. Because the Niners know that they're in a shootout. They finally recognized it. I feel like they didn't recognize it when they didn't go for it on fourth down. But now they know what they're up against. Now, I don't necessarily want to nitpick here, but this ball does come out a little bit late from Mullins. Right now that ball has to be out. And he pats the ball and really that was as late as it possibly could have been delivered before the defense would have been able to make a play on the ball. You don't need to pat the ball. It's more of a security thing, but I guarantee you every single one of us does it when we go to throw a football. Now again, knowing what kind of game they're in, the 49ers want to get downfield. They need big plays from their stars. So they're going to send Brandon Ayuk deep. And the defensive back has to honor that. And Brandon Ayuk really just runs a spectacular route here. He turns to the inside, and when the defensive back adjusts, he goes back to the outside again. And normally, you would run towards the corner in this situation, and that's what the defensive back thinks he's going to do. And so he is determined that he is not going to get beat to the corner here. But Ayuk... His footwork is so good. He's able to, I don't know how he does this, just stop on a dime and cuts straight to the sideline. This is an excellent route, especially for a rookie. Look at the protection Mullins has here. All day. And here, disaster strikes for the San Francisco 49ers. They pitch back to Tevin Coleman, and he loses nine yards on the play. Negative nine yards. All right, there were a number of problems with this play. Now, we've just seen Brandon Ayuk make a spectacular play as a receiver. But here, the 49ers ask him to be a blocker and he badly misses, but I'm not 100% blaming him here. I think it was a huge mistake by the coaching staff to ask this small, young, rookie wide receiver to block a defensive end. They should not have done that. Secondly, Tevin Coleman has to break this tackle. You got to make a play. You have to, you have to break this. Um, and it makes you wonder... Why was he in the game? Now, I don't say that to dog Tevin Coleman. We all know that well, his career in San Francisco has never really panned out to maybe what some of us thought it could be or at least had a chance to be. And what exactly was that supposed to look like? Well, remember from last year we talked about it. Catching passes out of the backfield and short yardage situations. This is neither. And it's not like they brought him in to give Raheem Moster or Jeff Wilson Jr. a rest because it was the start of the third quarter. Those guys had just had a rest at halftime. 
And both Wilson and Mostert were so effective in the game, there was no need to bring Coleman in. It was a failure on many levels by the coaching staff in play design, play call, personnel usage. And of course, it was poor execution by the players. Now, they were able to get some of that yardage back, but they had to settle for a field goal here on what was a really promising, effective drive. That had to feel like a little bit of a disappointment for the Niners and a big win for the Bills. Look at the body language of the Bills as they're jogging off the field. And now, Buffalo gets the ball back. It is imperative that the 49ers stop the Bills on this drive. Fortunately, it looks like Dante Johnson has the running back in his sights. So... Cole Beasley, of all people, reaches out and grabs him and yanks him down so that he can't make the tackle. That's against the rules, and it's a penalty on the Bills. The penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul and repeat the down, so it's an unusual down and distance now, first down and 18. And here we see an unusually bad throw from Allen. He had been on fire all game. That was one of his few miscues. Now it's second down and 18. The pass coverage for the 49ers is excellent. Allen's forced to scramble, and here he's forced to throw the ball away. It's going to be third down and 18, but Contavious Street hits him late out of bounds. That's a personal foul. That gives the Bills an automatic first down and 15 yards, a huge penalty, and a terrible, terrible mistake by the 49ers. So at two critical moments of the game, the 49ers are just making bad mistakes, undisciplined, sloppy football, and it's really, really about to hurt them. Now the Bills have their own number 19 on the roster, and that's Isaiah McKenzie. And here they're going to send him around on a wheel route. Now here you can see Dre Greenlaw telling Tarverius Moore to defend him. But for some reason, Moore sprints forward and is then forced to double back, and when you got to do that, you've got no chance. And this really felt like the coup de grace in the game, didn't it? But the Bills are still only up by two touchdowns. It's a two-score game. Let's see what the 49ers have in mind. They start off by going right back to their weapon, Brandon Ayuk. Now this ball is low, and that is the correct ball placement based on the position of the defenders. If the ball is up high, yes, it is an easier catch for Ayuk, but then he gets destroyed by the linebacker, and he might be in concussion protocol for the rest of the year. So the ball being low was correct, but it is a more difficult catch, now you bobbles it up and it's intercepted by the Bills. A terrible break for the 49ers. Who needs a coup de grace when your opponent's shooting themselves in the foot? The Bills tack on a field goal, making it a three-score game now. 17-point lead. And with only a minute left in the third quarter, time is winding down for the 49ers. So they do something they very, very rarely do, which is take a deep shot. Once again, Brandon Ayuk starts out running deep. And again, the defensive back has to respect that. This is another fine piece of route running by Brandon Ayuk. Now the defender is giving Ayuk a lot of space, so Ayuk cuts to the inside and again forces the defender to adjust. And when he does, he goes right back to his deep route. And here we get a chance to see his speed as he blows right by the defender. 49-yard gain. How appropriate. Now you may have noticed I had diagrammed Brandon running in a straight line, because that's what he was doing. But Mullins actually throws it to the corner. Watch Brandon Ayuk track this ball in the air and adjust at full speed. Ladies and gentlemen, the future is bright in San Francisco. What a catch. The 49ers decide to punch it in with a running play. 
Now, how many of you are saying, Josh, why do you keep doing this to us, saying it's a running play when it's a pass? Well, the whole idea of these fakes is it's very difficult for the defense to recognize that it's a fake, too. That's that's kind of the whole point, right? The 49ers fake like Kyle Juszczyk is going to be the lead blocker for the running back. And the Bills defense, every single one of them falls for the fake, except for this defensive back who's covering the tight end on the play. What the Niners do is just have use check, keep running, and then catch a pass. Touchdown San Francisco, and the 49ers are right back in this thing. What would you do if you were the Bills here? Would you run the ball a couple of times, take some time off the clock, and kick the field goal? That's tempting, but Buffalo is having the best season that they've had since the Jim Kelly era. And for those of you who are maybe a little bit younger or are newer fans to the game, you might not realize the Bills have a long and proud history in the NFL. They used to be juggernauts in the AFC with Jim Kelly and Thurman Thomas, Andre Reid. In fact, they went to four consecutive Super Bowls, something no other team has ever accomplished. They're beating a good Niners team on the road that was, oh, by the way, just in the Super Bowl themselves this last year. They're not running the ball here. They're going for the kill. Now, the Niners have been getting burned in man-to-man -man coverage all game, so here they switch to a zone. Richard Sherman allows his man to run right by him because he knows Tarverius Moore is going to slide over and pick him up. But Moore doesn't move, and Davis is wide open for the touchdown. And this really was the, the final blow. Very frustrating day for the Niners defense, who forced exactly one punt in the entire game with three minutes to go. And here you can see that the ball is still in the air well before the pass was completed, and Richard Sherman is already throwing Tarverius Moore under the bus. So you're the Bills, you're up big, you want to protect the lead and win this game, and you got to close it out, right? So here we see the defense is giving the 49ers a lot of space, and this is actually the right move, right? Because the worst thing the Bills could do in this situation is give up an easy bonehead touchdown to the 49ers without making them take any time off the clock. So they allow this space in the middle, and it's the right strategy. And Debo Samuel takes the space the defense left behind. Now, if you're thinking that Debo's had a bit of a quiet game, you'd be right. Debo was experiencing some soreness after the Rams game, so the 49er coaches centered this game plan around Brandon Ayuk. And that's the luxury the 49ers have now that they have those two stud wide receivers. Now, you probably noticed how much time Nick Mullins had to throw there in that pass protection. That's what you need to throw the ball deep down the field. Now here Nick Mullins makes a bad throw. This ball needs to be out in front of Kendrick Bourne, and if it is, it's a touchdown. But the pass is thrown behind him, and Bourne has to slow up and come back for it, and it gives the defender just barely enough time to get over there and make a play. Now the play was ruled a touchdown on the field, but it was reviewed and overturned. And here we have a great shot. Kendrick Bourne's knee is down and the ball is short of the goal line. Here the 49ers run a quarterback sneak, a play that I can't recall seeing Nick Mullins run before. Watch his feet here. He tries to get a head start on the quarterback sneak and that's against the rules. That's a false start on the quarterback and it's a five yard penalty for the 49ers. And here we see another bad throw. 
Now he's scrambling, so his feet aren't set. Somewhat understandable. But again, this ball needs to be out in front of Jeff Wilson Jr. Instead, the pass is thrown behind him, and it gives the defender an angle to make a play on the ball. The pass is intercepted. The 49ers are going to emerge from this game bloodied and beaten, and the Bills look like a legitimate Super Bowl contender. They might be the best team in the AFC. Hats off to Buffalo. A very, very well-played game.